see if I can figure out how to work this. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, I'm not going to burn it. I'm just from the hip, so I had to overcompensate by looking cool. <laughs> First thing we do, let's kill all the lawyers. Second thing we do, let's burn all the laws. Members of the University Philosophical Society. We've heard a lot of talk, naturally, about law this evening. I don't really want to talk about law. Instead, I want to talk about violence. I want to talk to you in this closing proposition speech about three different kinds of violence. State violence, discursive violence, and the violence of change. I will proceed as follows. I want to talk to you about the legal society, the problems inherent within legalism as a concept. I want to talk to you then about the, how the Constitution feeds into that, about the problems of liberal constitutionalism generally. And then I want to talk to you about the alternatives to constitutionalism, about how society would be better if we burnt Bunrock Nehru. But on the idea of the legal violence, of the, of the legal society, this falls under my idea of state violence, the kind of cool theme I've got going there. Buckle up, guys, because you're about to hear a speech from an angry lefty undergrad who's read some Duck and Kennedy articles, so it's, it's going to be exciting. But it is written on Matheson branded paper, so there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a bit of an irony. But I think there are a lot of problems, fundamentally, with the legal society. We get a lot of stuff from Owen specifically and from uh, the opposition generally about the idea of the Constitution providing us with freedom. But recognize that laws, by their very nature, take away our freedom. They are orders telling us to do things and constraining our liberty in certain ways. But I think I'm willing to buy Ock's analysis that this constraint of freedom can be to our benefit in certain ways, can provide us with gains in our life. I just don't think that the gains they tell us about are that compelling. I don't think that law is the best way to achieve those gains. I think fundamentally a lot of things happen in society at the point at which we have laws, because laws are just a construct that we've invented to organize our social relations. And I think that like, the main thing that happens is that a hierarchy is created within society between the people who know law and the people who don't. You have this power knowledge hierarchy that is built up within society. You get an overclass of lawyers who are parasitic on this hierarchy. You recognize that I didn't begin my speech saying, kill all the tailors, because no one has ever said that, because tailors have never been an overclass who know something that everyone else doesn't accept for tailoring. I think that the problem with that is that when things like laws do constrain our liberty to such an extent, when they do regulate our existence to such a degree, I think it is fundamentally wrong that certain groups in society can have greater access, greater understanding of how that operates. I think specifically constitutions which regulate some of the most important things in our lives, our fundamental like being, the things that we need to achieve a full human flourish. I think the point at which they are only accessible to lawyers, are only accessible to people who studied law in university, I think that's a bad thing. I think the Irish constitution in particular really plays into this. I think it's written with a huge amount of legalese. I think it's incredibly difficult to interpret. I think it is incredibly puts a lot of power in the hands of judges, in the hands of lawyers. I think that's the first problem that we have with the constitution. And actually, I think this kind of I'll, I'll take you later on. I think this kind of ties into stuff Kate was talking about in her speech, about people just most of the time not thinking about law. I think that that's a bad thing at the point at which laws regulate our entire lives. But I think there are also a lot of problems specifically with the Irish Constitution. And I'm not just talking about the Catholic ethos, because I actually don't think the Catholic ethos in the Constitution is that prominent. I think it's been heavily secularized by the courts. But I do think it has other problems. I think it's fundamentally a pretty much 19th century classical liberal constitution. I think there are problems with that. There's things like the fact that rights in the constitution are essentially neutral. They, they work off a completely pure utilitarian calculus. The rights of a landlord are just as respected as the property rights of a tenant. I think that that doesn't recognize the fundamental power imbalance that exists between a landlord and a tenant. I think it also does things like only really having negative rights, only saying that the state can't do this to you and never saying that the state has to provide for you. I think, I think there are a lot of problems with states generally, but I think the point at which we live under a state, I want that state to work for me. So I think what our constitution does is, it gives us the freedom to talk about the constitution, to criticize the constitution, to own property, but it doesn't give us the freedom to have a house, to have clothes, to be looked after when we are ill. I think these are all problems that amass within our constitution. I don't think this is the Constitution's fault. I think this is probably the fault of the capitalist patriarchal state. But I do think that the Constitution is instrumentalized towards the aims 
of that state. I think the Constitution legitimizes and justifies the capitalist patriarchal state, which I think we should reject. Yes. So this actually ties in perfectly to my point coming up about the violence of change, which is my ideas about how society should be run. So I, I think there are a few things we could do to make it better. I think we, like the soft version is just to put positive rights into the constitution, just to have a constitution like the better ones in the world, like the South African constitution, for example, to have a constitution that is more progressive. I think that's an option. I also think, and maybe this is a bit ambitious, but I think we also could just fundamentally change the social relations of society so that a constitution is no longer necessary. I think it's legitimate for the people on proposition to strive for something like this, to strive for a world where we don't need a document to tell us that we have freedom of speech because everyone in the world just knows that we have. I think, in a sense, laws are an, ob laws are an obstacle to achieving that because they imply to us that these are things we didn't have already, that these are things that needed to be granted to us by law. So I think, you know, maybe we're not going to achieve a perfect anarcho-syndicalist utopia, but I think we can strive towards that, and I do think it would be better than the Constitution, and I do think the Constitution is specifically an obstacle towards that. And I think that, like, I mean, I reject the state that we live in, and I think when you reject the state that you live in, it is perfectly legitimate to reject a document that props that up, that allows that to exist, that legitimizes it. And so I think when I say I want to burn the Constitution, it's not because I want to burn Dev or the preamble or like the references to God in the Constitution. It's because I want to burn the entire capitalist patriarchal state. And I think that is an amazing thing to stand for. Thank you.